never believed in women-focused gender programs. I hate women days. I hate women lists. When there is the list and women's list, I got the most influential people in tech versus the most influential women in tech. I've never been a big fan of unfair in family talks when uh, women uh, supported and men controlled the environment. All you're forced to do is housework chores about which you complain to your friends in a carefully organized short coffee meetups. Why do I feel that way? We all know that the problem is there. It exists. Only half of the world's female population is getting paid for the work they do. Even then, they are paid less than their peer male workers. And that's despite the fact that we help to improve profits, we help to improve organizational culture. Think about this for a moment. In the next eight years, the world will have lost $12 trillion in global GDP. This is almost the size of U.S. external debt. <laughs> Throughout my career, I've worked for the Armenian government, World Bank projects, U.S. government in an organization called USAID, built a startup accelerator for Microsoft, was a Microsoft GM in Armenia, and now I've founded and am running my own company, SoloLearn, which is a global community of mobile code learners. Different people, different cultures, different companies, different settings. All except USAID men-dominated. But I've always felt extremely lucky to be a woman. I've always felt respected, accepted in every business setting I've been to. Why is that so? Um, am I mannish? Am I lucky? Is there something else? <laughs> The world as we have it today has been built by men. So it's their rules, customs, traditions, and they've been building it for thousands of years. It's changing, but this has been true since the times when men's ability to feed and protect their families has been key to the tribe's survival. There have definitely been periods of women dominance over large areas, over large periods of time, starting from Amazons in Greece to Nefertiti and Cleopatra in Egypt, to Queen Victoria and Margaret Thatcher in England, Indira Gandhi in India, just to name the few. But it's still hard to argue that the world primarily lives in a patriarchal society today. And we want it to change. Good for economy, good for progress, good for women, most importantly, good for men. <laughs> but how are we doing it? We whine and complain. We're out there on the internet looking to be offended by everything. We feel hurt, humiliated, underrepresented, ignored. And I think that's the most unproductive attitude in any setting. You stand no chance of succeeding. So if this doesn't work, then what does? I believe you are strong and unbeatable if instead of focusing on an obstacle, you focus on an opportunity. So let's focus on the road and not so much the wall by understanding the environment we're in well, finding our own niche in it, and willing to develop and grow for everybody's benefit. And the first thing not to do about the society you're about to enter is be offensive, because that makes the insiders protective, that makes them feel overwhelmed, and as banal as it sounds, being nice to work with is a must. And this is gender neutral. <laughs> In homogeneous societies, being different can be good or bad. Foreigners experience greater pressure. But if you understand the rules and you play it right, you get bonus points. In fact, being a woman helped me succeed in situations where success wasn't possible by default. Imagine a smartly built, centralized, very hierarchical decision-making system where every chain of command has its do's and don'ts, and this system has been built and has been improving for the last 20 years. All are men, I had no control over it. To succeed, I had to hack it. I had to get every chain in there to behave differently, even if for a short period of time. Impossible? Yes, totally impossible if you're a man. Because you're an insider, you have the rules you have to follow. 
and any deviation is not acceptable. But here I come, a woman that speaks a different language and shows a different path that turns out to be beneficial for all. And you know what? It worked. I closed the deal that many men have been trying to close for many, many years. And I closed it because I wasn't a stereotype, I didn't have the rules, the written rules I had to follow, and that gave me more freedom and more flexibility. So if you're French, you're not expected to speak Mandarin. If you are Buddhist, you're not expected to follow Islam or Christian rules. And that gives you a different entry point. More freedom, more flexibility, and that translates into bonus points. I think my next point is best illustrated by my recent fundraising experience in Silicon Valley. Imagine this is the snapshot of our business. The numbers are made up, by the way. And guess how a man would present it? He would go, we're at 3 million users. Out of 3 million, 1 million are exceptional profiles. We've doubled our user base in the last couple of months. And you know how I, I did it? We, we just reached 3 million. We want to be at 10, and to get to 10, we have to prove that the concept of peer-to-peer -peer learning is going to prove itself, and that will eventually improve, hopefully, engagement and retention, and that will hopefully get us to 10. So which one would you find? The winner one, and, or the one that is full of uncertainty? Right, I learned my, my lesson the hard way. In fact, my mentor, who is a man, once told me, Like, your story has too many aspects, too many angles. Just focus on one thing, just focus on whatever you do best. So, focus on your strengths when presenting yourself to the world. Don't give the world the mess that is happening in your head. Just focus on what you are best at, focus on what you have achieved, and focus on what you are good at. That doesn't mean that the mess is useless, no. When you're all by yourself, in your team, or with your friends, open up the whole picture. You'll see the challenges, you analyze the challenges, and that helps you to develop and grow. But when doing a sales job, be it of yourself, or of your business, or when presenting yourself to the world, focus on the strengths. And my last point is, I've always believed in men-woman cooperation. And there is a lot of research on the topic, a lot of statistics. Women, like balanced teams, perform better, have better profits, better culture. But I don't need statistics here. Solo Learn wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't brief, to the point, learning content, paired with the motivation and infusion infused into our learners every day. It wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for the best software architecture paired with total flexibility in business decision-makings, and wine and cheese versus beer hot dog compromise that we have to make that keeps us all in balance and fit. <clears throat> This is hard to do, you would say. Communicating right, creating the right culture, finding your own niche and differences. No, it doesn't. I claim that every woman sitting here today has this unique set of attributes. Where we sense the situation better, we're more diplomatic, we have a different approach to problem solving. Multitasking is not a good thing, but even then, we're better at multitasking. So instead of feeling underrepresented, I think the important thing is to find your own feminine strengths and pair it with your individual strengths that is going to help us succeed. And I hope that not only for women, but also as parents, we will help our like, daughters to also not only find their individual strengths, but also to unveil their feminine potential that can lead them to being successful and finding their, their own place in this world. So the bottom line is, men will never stop complaining about women drivers. Not in the near future, at least. <laughs> Just like we will never stop complaining about our significant ones failing to dress our kids properly. And I really think these differences make our lives interesting. But please, let's stop being negative. Let's stop spending our brain power and energy for destroying the male world. <laughs> Even more absurd, let's not try to create a parallel female world. Because feeling accomplished 
Feeling happy is not about being a man or a woman. It's about being good. So let's just be good by finding our own strengths and pairing those with our womanly magic for a better, smarter, nicer, and a more balanced world. And the sooner we start, fewer women are out there, the bigger your unfair advantage gets. Thank you.